everybody. This is Kelly. We're here with another edition of Ask Ron. And our first question is from Aaron Powell. And he says, I'm doing a sandwich lease option. Does Aaron say where he's from? He doesn't. So, oh, Aaron, so Aaron is from nowhere. He is. Okay. Well, and he might be with the guy he's buying the house from. Or, yeah. He says, I'm doing a sandwich lease option, mm -hmm. which will likely become an axe deal. Okay. Thinking of getting a deed in escrow from the original seller as he is planning to travel the country by RV. Uh -huh. But since I likely won't be staying in the deal, can I deed in escrow, or can that deed in escrow be made out to the end buyer, or would that be considered practic practicing real estate without a license? Well, it's not practicing real estate without a license, but I don't like it, to tell you the truth, there. Uh, getting a deed in escrow is probably not going to be enough for you to take title and then transfer title. And if you do that, it's going to be double closing costs. I don't think I'd worry about it if I were you. He's traveling an RV or not, he can always going to be accessible to you. They have this thing called the internet nowadays, and you can pretty much reach anybody from anywhere. I know I did an RV trip last year. I didn't have any trouble <laughs> literally on the phone with somebody every single day, so I don't think that's an issue. And anything you need done can be done electronically. He doesn't have to walk into somebody's office and sign anything today. And that's assuming that he's not even back before you even get ready to cash this thing out. Now, the question, though, is should you be at least optioning it from him or should you just be buying it with owner financing? And I don't know enough about the deal to answer that because you gave me absolutely no numbers. I know you said it was an ax deal, but I'm not sure that's the right exit or not. So... That's the best I can do with the limited information you gave me, Aaron, from nowhere. The next question is from Kim Shewer from South Carolina. Oh, good. If I am looking for owner financing homes, uh -huh. should I be looking for buyers first? No. I don't want to lock up a property that is too expensive for my area and not be able to find a buyer okay. quickly. Listen to me. You, you're not going to have any risk no matter what the expense of your house is, you're going to put it under contract. You're not at risk until you close the purchase. If you're so worried about not finding the buyer, then you'll just have to make sure the seller's aware you're going to locate your buyer before you close. But that is all going to depend on the, on the numbers, the quality of the deal. If somebody wants to give you $50,000 worth of equity, and all you've got to do is take over their debt and pay a little closing cost, you're not going to sit around and wait for a buyer, you're going to close it immediately. I hope, anyway, because if you haven't, that means you haven't been trained properly. Whenever a deal is really good, you've got to protect it. You cannot just uh, wait for a buyer and then expect something to come along before the seller gets antsy and decides they don't want to sell to you anymore. If it's a deal, close it now. Worry about the buyer later. If you don't know and you're going to stay awake at night worrying about stuff that probably isn't even real, then go find the buyer first. But honestly, um, if it's worth closing, if it's a deal worth closing, get it closed. And if i got to sit around and wait for a buyer, it's only because there's no equity in it, and I know it's not worthy of me buying. And that's probably going to turn into an axe deal. So, uh, again, you did not give me any numbers, so I'm just guessing here. Without the numbers, I can't critique it any further than that. Okay, and our next question is from Donnie Miner from Ohio. Hey, Donnie. Um, and he went to your quick start in Cincinnati in June. Uh, must have been last year, huh? Coming again this June. Oh, yes. Actually. He, sorry, he is going. I apologize. Oh, he is going in June. He is okay. going in June. I didn't think I did one there last year. <laughs> right. And um, he wants to get a deal done before he gets there. I have the right. VAs making calls for me, Good. but a lot of the leads seem to be, sorry, the leads seem to be sellers that just want to give a discount on the price and not sell on terms. Well, you can expect that a lot, Donnie, and everybody listening. Most people want full price for their house, and most people want all cash. And uh, that's the game. The game is the math. And we are fully aware that's the case going in. Always has been. Always will be. So we're only working with the few that get screened out along the way and drop to the bottom. They're willing to talk about terms. And, you know, it's not about price today. Well, yeah, we can pay full price if we need to and still make a ton of money because we're going to get termed now by raising the price and, and, and uh, offering terms to our buyers. We get to raise the price and we get to keep that difference, and that difference is paid in cash up front. So uh, right now, Donnie, since we're only, well, I don't know, a couple, three weeks away, 
what I want you to do is pile the leads up high, get as many yeses as you can, make sure they're called by the VA or by you, and bring them to class and let us turn them into deals for you because you're, you'll see there's only a marginal shift between what you're currently doing and what needs to get done to make a lot of money from those leads. You bring them, we'll produce the results. So bring as many as you can and I'll put the wolves to call on them and I, I almost, I can't guarantee you, but I almost promise you, you bring me a little stack of, of leads and you're going to go home with a couple of deals that you're going to uh, process the following week. Our next question is from Hannah York. Hannah? Says I buy. And Hannah's from nowhere as well? She's also from nowhere, okay. unfortunately. I hate, I would hate yeah. to live there. Um, I buy a house with the owner financing, uh -huh. with owner financing it. How can I sell it to a home buyer with owner financing without violating Doc Frank? Dodd Frank has nothing to do with what you do, Hannah. I want you to forget the words Dodd or Frank. Okay? You're exempt from that law and you can buy with owner financing and sell it with owner financing all day long. However, I think you probably ought to examine selling on a lease purchase instead of owner financing. Another discussion we need to have because there are pros and cons of both. And you didn't tell me what state you live in so I can't even comment on how long it takes to get it back which is a, a strong um, indicator as to whether you want to sell it with owner financing or not. Uh, here in Florida and, and many other states, it takes so long if I had to foreclose on it. I haven't done that and I can't even remember how long, but if I had to, because we have to plan on the worst, uh, I want to know how long it's going to take me. And, and here we're talking, I don't know, six months to nine months easy to get it back if I had to foreclose. Therefore, I will almost always lease purchase and not sell with owner financing where I can have them out in a month or two. Um, again, more information would have helped me get clarity on your question. Next question is Matt from Matt Gordon from Illinois. Matt. Um, he has a question about doing owner financing where the seller carry, sellers carry back mm -hmm. a mortgage in note and the seller has a mortgage still in their own name. Right. My question is, when you're closing this type of deal and you have your attorney create a fill at you have your attorney create and fill out a promissory note and mortgage between your land trust and yep. the seller. Yep. Do you have your attorney record the promissory note and mortgage? At, at Absolutely. That? Okay. Your attorney would have it no other way. In fact, he would not allow you not to record it because it's required by state law. So anytime you do a wraparound mortgage, which is what you're discussing, it must be recorded. That's the attorney's job, not your job. The next question is from your favorite, Marianne Nunez. Oh, Marianne. <laughs> Um, Ron, answered, Ron, you answered a question about either seller finance or subject to mm -hmm. from seller and sublease to tenant buyer in what to say to the seller to get a discount on the selling price when the tenant is ready to cash out early. Yeah. Thanks. But would I be able to do the same if I lease option from seller and sublease to tenant buyer and yes. buyer is ready to cash out early? Yes. What's well, it hurt? It's a phone call and a three-minute conversation and it could make you thousands of dollars. You've got nothing to lose. Absolutely. Absolutely. I would always try to discount when the buyer cashes me out. Why don't you go get a buyer that's going to cash you out and then we'll talk? Because most of them don't, Marianne. You know that. The next question is from Scott Tabe from California. Scott. A seller financing deal I closed recently had to be closed by my corporate corporation name. There was an attorney involved on the other side that would not allow us to take title and land trust. I plan to rehab this home. Question. Mm -hmm. Would you advise to assign or transfer the property into my land trust name nah. after we have closed? Nah, don't worry about it. If it's in a corporation and you're going to flip it anyway, just flip it out of the corporation and make life easier. And I'm sorry I can't protect you from attorneys. But hey, you did the right thing. You got the deal done. You did what you had to do. Uh, corporations are right. I just don't want you to leave a lot of properties in any one corporation, but that's not your intent anyway. And I have a second question from mm -hmm. Scott as well. It says, we have approved short sale from the lenders, but one of the judgment holders is not willing to accept the bank's offer. The seller would like to file for bankruptcy to remove the judgment and sell me the house. However, they would like me to pay for the bankruptcy attorney. Nope, oh, stop. Sorry. The whole plan is has uh, got a big fatal flaw in it. If your seller files for bankruptcy, you're not buying the house, nobody's buying the house, and here's the big one. Filing for bankruptcy does not remove the judgment off of the house. 
it just eliminates the debtor's um, obligation to pay it. It doesn't remove the lien from the property, so that will not accomplish anything to clean up your title. Now, I don't know um, how many liens you got on the house or whatever. Um, I'd always look for the, the most superior lien that I could buy, possibly buy and then foreclose everybody off myself. I don't know if that's the case for you or not. Well, you need to get some uh, an attorney to give you some good advice on the best move to make here. And because you didn't tell me what position the lien holder is in that would not cooperate with you. Are they in first? Are they in second? Uh, what kind of lien is it? I just don't know enough to answer that. Tell you what, hit me again next week with all the facts and I will. And finally, the last question is from Josiah Rich from California. It's John. Josiah. I have just signed up and received several leads. I would like to know how to proceed and convert the leads into sales. What are my next steps? Okay, Josiah, you fell right into that one, man. Your next step is to get into the Quick Start Real Estate School because until you do, you're going to be a cloud. <laughs> Always figuring out, trying to figure out what to do next and why it's not working. You've got to come get the basic training, man. Just get over it. It is not fair for anybody to assume they're going to go into a business as lucrative as buying and selling houses and it is very, very lucrative, way more lucrative than a restaurant, I can tell you that for first-hand knowledge. Is it fair for you to expect that you're going to bypass the training and go right to the money? Uh-uh, ain't going to work, and I don't care what business you're in. You're just going to make a big mess. You're going to lose, lose way more deals than you're ever going to get if you get any. And I'm not just talking to you, I'm talking to everybody listening. If you don't do what you have to do to get trained, don't get really upset if nothing happens in the business. It's only fair. I tell people all the time, you can't learn how to run a restaurant by eating there. You can't learn how to buy and sell houses by watching a few of my videos on the Gold Club, so let's not kid each other. You want to get trained? Come see the old guy before I quit doing it. Look at me. Look at that. It's great. I'm not going to do this forever. Better get what you can out of this brain while it still is functioning. As far as I know, it's functioning okay right this minute. <laughs> could change tomorrow. <laughs> Look, getting into my quick start school, we can finance you. It's only $1,500 down if you need financing. And we have a help card to get you in there. Uh, if you get approved for that, we can get you in there with no money down you just, and zero interest for six months. So if you really want to get trained, call my office. Let's figure out the best way to get you in there. And if that's not going to work, then we've always got the courses to come with the boot camp that you can, that you can get. Um, like my terms course alone is only $1,197. And come on, if you really want in, we'll figure out a way to help you, but you got to make that step to get committed to your training. All right, boy, I got on a platform there, didn't I? Huh? <laughs> you asked for it. All right, is that it? That's it. Okay, hold on. I don't see your name on the summit registration yet, and it's coming up. It's the end of June. You better get registered. Let me, let me just tell you why. Forget all the cool stuff we're doing. Forget all the networking, forget the, forget the dinners, forget the $100,000 worth of prizes we're going to give away, forget the massive trainings that I'm going to do and the other guest speakers are going to be doing, forget all that. But don't forget the fact that this is the largest deal structuring event we have. We did over $3 million worth of net profit for our students in February. We're going to do, we're going to do everything we can in Vegas to do the same thing. Is it a good business decision? For you to come to the summit loaded with leads so that we can make deals so you can go back home and turn them into cash. Our VAs are going to call them for you the week before the summit. Even if you are not in a, uh, have our VA service, if you are registered for the summit uh, and you have a hotel booked at the Green Valley Resort, we'll call some leads for you and get you some leads or some uh, deals ready to bring to the summit because my mentoring staff is going to sit there and call these people for three solid days making you deals while you watch. You're not going to get another opportunity at that. That alone is worth you registering and getting to Vegas. Listen, how many dollars is it, do you need to make it worth your while? Would $10,000 on a little old teeny small lease option deal make it make sense for you to come to Vegas? Well, I'm telling you, I don't do deals for less, I don't even do deals for that. I won't do a $10,000 deal, but I'm going to let you do one. Uh, come let us do it for you, for crying out loud. We're doing everything but writing you the check. Get out here and get registered for this summit. You can't miss this thing. See you in Vegas.